Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 2L. We're going to think about the relationship between mutations and natural selection. We'll talk about clearing up some misconceptions that the chances that a mutation is going to benefit an organism don't affect the chance that the mutation will arise, the environment doesn't affect which mutations arise, and organisms haven't evolved mechanisms to control what kinds of mutations they get or when they get them. Now, beginners often think that a need for change causes mutations happen to happen, that mutations happen because the environment changes. This makes sense. Natural selection optimizes function. Why didn't natural selection act on the ability to evolve, so to prevent death and extinction? People often think that even a desire for change can cause mutations to happen. Um, there are people who will sell you um, tools purporting to be able to reprogram your DNA. Here's a big list of CDs. You can buy all these CDs online, but none of them are actually going to tell you how to change your DNA because you can't do that. So we've talked about Many factors influence when mutations happen. Many factors influence what kinds of mutation happen. But one thing that doesn't influence when mutations happen or what kind of mutations happen is the effect that the mutation will have on the organism's ability to survive and reproduce. The effect on the organism's fitness is not a factor in determining what kinds of mutations happen. Mutations happen by chance, and then natural selection selects from among those mutations. So mutations arise randomly with respect to their functional consequences. They can't be directed. The cell has no way to do this. Why not? Why didn't natural selection evolve ways to direct mutations? It would certainly be beneficial natural so if we had ways to prevent the bad mutations and promote the good mutations. Well, there's two reasons. First, the processes that cause mutations have no way to know the functions of the DNA sequences that they change. DNA polymerase replicates DNA. It knows nothing about the functions of the sequences that it replicates. Introns, exons, junk DNA, genetic parasites, DNA polymerase can't tell them apart. It replicates them all, treats them all equally. It has no way it could ever tell them apart. Second, cells have no way to predict, even if it could tell what the sequences do, there's no way to tell which changes would be beneficial. A cell would have to understand its environment. It would have to understand the future. Cells are just collections of molecules. They have wonderful molecular machines in them, but they can't see the future. They can't test their environment. So we might think that, well, good mutations happen more often, but that's because we're misled by natural selection. So mutations are arising at random. We have good mutations, which are rare. We have mutations that don't change, changes that don't change the genotype, don't change the phenotype. We have harmful mutations. They're all arising by chance. And then natural selection comes in. And what does it do over evolutionary time? It increases the frequency of mutations that are beneficial, mutations that don't have any effect stick around, it eliminates the mutations that are harmful. So what we see when we look at the organisms around us, we preferentially see the beneficial mutations, not the harmful mutations. We don't see all the mutations that arise unless we look carefully as a geneticist in research. Otherwise, we only see the effects of the mutations that persist. Now, here's a question, and I want to word this question carefully. Here's a gene. Let's say this is a gene that a plant, codes of a protein that a plant uses to take up nitrogen. 
And here are four of the many possible mutations. Here are four places where a mutation could occur in this gene. There's many other mutations could occur at many other positions, but we're just considering four that have different effects on the phenotype. If the plant is growing in soil with insufficient nitrogen, which of these mutations is most likely to occur? The mutation at position A, which activates the promoter, a mutation at position B, which creates a premature stop codon, a mutation at position C, which doesn't change the function of the protein at all, it's a silent mutation, or a mutation at position D, which actually changes the protein in a way that improves the efficiency of nitrogen uptake. So considering just these four positions of the many positions in the gene, which of these four mutations is most likely to occur?